so different to watch their movements as soon as you impose the board. Everything gets more serious, it's only two inches high. We noticed the exact same thing on the inline lunge test in the FMS because the elevated platform for some reason is much different than a piece of tape on the carpet or the ground. And so we see people do things when we impose that extra, that little extra bit of difficulty that produces to us what we think is their authentic movement. If it's not functional, we want to capture that so we can remedy that. So, and Brad, I just got one question for you. If you walked out and did five of those in a row without a fall, would there be any question in your mind whether Irwan was here or not? was your quality at least acceptable. Yeah. You, you get the feedback right away. Oh yeah. If you fall off, you know the rep doesn't count. And if you don't fall off, you at least had the integrity. It had nothing to do with your strength. And it basically had to do with your mobility, but the way you use your mobility is actually your stability. And so you, you're limited by the two by four. Now, if the coaches happen to turn this way, your feedback is still at a high enough level, which to me is what self-limiting is and so many of us that that may train without supervision the 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 coach is not always there the trainer's not always there self-limiting exercises are what our ancestors used to become adaptable and what we've done many times is remove the limitations so people could burn more calories and get their endorphins flowing and yet the quality of movement continues to erode as they expend their calories and sometimes i literally think we shun the self-limiting activity because we can't get the volume we think we need. And five of those is plenty of volume. <laughs> oh yeah. Because your quality deteriorates right after that, which do those reps really count anyway? Exactly, and that's what we emphasize in MoveNet, establish movement quality first, and then increase volume, intensity, and complexity. It means that we are interested in conditioning, but that conditioning is not something we have to do first. It is something that stems from the practice of the in-context movement. Sounds like we got a new term, conditional conditioning. There are conditions to your conditioning. There are conditions to your conditioning. <laughs>